Good morning everyone. Shall we begin with a word of prayer? Our Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you that you've been with us throughout the night and brought us to a new day. And we pray now that you're blessed as we continue to study our thoughts from the Mount of Blessing. We pray for the presence of our Holy Spirit and we ask all this in Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Amen. We'll begin with um, hymn number two from Christ in Song. We're going to project it in case you haven't got the words. The Coming King. And it has four verses. We'll take the first. Who would like to take the second? Anyone for the second verse? I can do the second. No, thank you. Anyone for the third verse? <clears throat> Death three, anyone? Does that mean another song? Yes, I'll do I'll do the third one. Right, thank you. And anyone for the fourth verse? I'll do the fourth one. Thank you. The coming king is at the door. Who wants the cross for sinners born? But now the righteous ones alone, he comes to gather home at the door, 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 yes, even at the door, he is coming. The signs that show his coming near are fast fulfilling year by year, and soon we'll hail the glorious dawn of heaven. Stay no more at the door, 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 yes, even at the door. He's coming, he's coming, he's even at the door. Look not on earth for strife to cease, look not below of joy and peace, until the Saviour comes again to burn death and sin at the door at the door at the door yes even at the door he's coming he's coming he's even at the door then in God glorious earth made new we will do the country say joy through these mortals shall mortal be in time eternity. At the door, at the door, at the door, yes, even at the door, he is coming. He's coming, he is at the door. Amen. 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 Thank you for singing. I'm just going to. Um, I'm sorry. I'll close it from this side. I'm just trying to get this down.
If it sounds difficult, I've got to try and share the screen again. Um, let me just go back into Zoom. I'll start the recap while you're doing that. Um, I think I've got it now. Yeah. Uh, we had more testimonies about kind neighbours and uh, school fees uh, being paid also. Do not be anxious for tomorrow. Trust in the Lord. And uh, uh, some, uh, some, some of these rich people, they had their bodies frozen because the, uh, Walt Disney, Walt one Disney them, was yeah. one of them and uh, there was many of them that, because they thought that when, um, when uh, knowledge was was um, uh, increased increased <laughs> yeah they thought if they got um a cure for the their disease um is a big bring them back to life you know and freeze the body and and uh, sort them out but um but these people that died they didn't do it while they were still alive they did it just after they died didn't they so yeah it had killed them so it doesn't make sense does it no because it had killed them I mean, perhaps if they'd done it before they died, I don't, well, well I don't think it can do it anyway, but I mean, the, the, the logic in it, <laughs> there isn't any. Because people believe the first law, thou shalt not surely die. Yeah. But mm. Satan said to, God, to Eve in the garden, <laughs> the truth sets us free. <coughs> The devil continues with this lie to people, thou shalt not surely die. It's such a, it's such an important um, uh, thing that we know the state right, of the dead. dead, that we're not deceived. We've got to believe it as well. People are told the state of the dead, but some don't believe it. So if you don't believe it, you're you, you um, up Vulnerable. for all these deceptions. Vulnerable. Then there's a question about judgment um, asked. Um, we are to follow Christ day by day. God does not give his children um, uh, life's directions all at once. It will cause confusion. We must know how to give people, how much to give people at the time. Then, then the, the illustration about driving, if you, you take someone the wrong way, um, it takes longer to get to to if you, it, it, it takes longer for you to get to where you want to go if you if you go the wrong way. Mm. And there's more. And then there was that about reverence, about how reverence. There's more reverence in the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of England, all them that there are in the, the Seventh Day Adventist Church. You know, sometimes at the end of the meetings, uh, it's like a market. You know, people stood in the groups talking about anything but Sabbath issues, you know, and um, it's sad. Um, so, you know, if we wish our church was a church where, you know, where the building where you could be all be ushered out into the lobby and it was big enough for everybody to get in there, you know, and then then only talk about things that you should do on the Sabbath. But um, not all churches are built like that. Yeah, we we need them. We need more room. Yeah, we do. Yeah, uh, it's packed every week. Because our church used to be a co-op, <laughs> and uh, and the builder's yard, because mm. it was two buildings. Well, I think it started. I think it started one. a co-op. Then it went to two different. I think two it was different. a printers. A printers and a and, and, and a and a builder's yard, and then they, they add it back together again. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, um, and talking about reverence, um, reverence, uh, 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 and you, you, you sometimes you don't you don't see reverence in music. You don't need to start dancing and everything, you know. And um, and they're talking about judgment. Um, he says, "No, you're not to judge angels," you know. That's and. Um, uh, First Corinthians six verse three was quoted, and um, Matthew seven verse one, um, the speck in the beam, you know, the speck, the speck in somebody's eye, and the beam in your own eye, you know. Only God can judge in spiritual things. Mm. 
and because um, you know you, you, you can write people off I mean most people must have written, wrote Manasseh off but um, <laughs> if he wanted to save you know he was wicked but he repented it's not how you start it's how you finish mm -hmm. and we don't know the motive so we should not judge you know And then what um, said, um, do not think yourself better than other men. You know, we've, um, we're all at different stages, and some people might be struggling with one thing, and uh, and others with another thing. It's interesting that paragraph. I mean that sentence. In criticising him, you are passing sentence upon yourself, for you show that you are a participant with Satan, the accuser of the brethren. And that's interesting um, sentence. As we say, God sees the big picture. We only see the little bit. Mm, yeah, we do. Mm. Yeah, but um, you're told not to go to court. You know. Uh, with, with your brother or sister. Try and deal with it out of court. But some criminal things end up in court, you've got no choice. You know, it'll go, it'll go to court. And that's as far as... Um, I think that's about everything, is it? Yeah. There's probably things... There's more miss. things, yeah, as you said, while you're writing one thing down, you're missing the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any thoughts about yesterday's study? Don't see any hands. Everybody's quiet, so let's continue. Yeah, can I ask a oh, yeah. quick question? Yeah. Um, what do you do with brothers or sisters who borrow money, they promise to give it back? It's not like they are not working or anything, but they don't. What you suppose, according to the Bible, what should you do? That's a difficult one. Mm. Has anyone got any answers to that one? Can I can I try to answer that? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's something that um, we have indeed to be very careful. Uh, as much as we, it's wonderful to give. And uh, but also let the Holy Spirit lead to what you can give, and what you in case they don't give it for some for some reason or the other, because sometimes we may be working and then circumstances come, and then we're not able to pay back. Um, but in Luke chapter six. It says something about it. Uh, uh, um, it says, um, from verse 30, it says, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods. Ask them not again. And as you would that man should do to you, do ye also to them likewise goes on to say, if you love them which love you, what thank, what thank have you for, sin, for, for sinners also love those that love them? And it goes on to say, and if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you for sinners also do even the same? And listen to what is going to say, be said here. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much 
again. But love you, your enemies. He goes on to say those wonderful words. Um, I, it's a life experience. When, and God allows that to happen, uh, whereby uh, people are in need uh, and we give the best that we can. For, but the word of admonition is, give what you know you can lose and without the spirit of grudge in the heart. Uh, because uh, if you are willing to lose all and to give to that person who has borrowed, let it settle in your heart. God knows. And if, uh, because the Bible says we should know we should not owe anyone anything. But sometimes circumstances may come. And, uh, and uh, those people who have vowed to pay back, they're unable to pay back. And then they, they live in fear. How are they going to come to you? How are they going to pay this debt? How? And then they find themselves even going uh, getting worse and worse in their walk of life. So... For, for us here is, uh, if you know you can give what you cannot uh, tie yourself on, give it. If you are unable, don't give. And that is the spirit of the Lord giving us this admonition in this verse. Amen. Yes, yes sir. Sir. thank that. you for those um, thoughts. Very interesting. Um, I think you need to pray for the person because sometimes, sometimes people are borrow and they've no intentions of giving back. You know, we've seen that, and um, yeah, they, they could, but it's the right if they borrow and they've got the, the, the they've got the money to pay back and they don't, then they're in the wrong. And so you have to pray that they will do the right thing by God because, um, you know, um, if if you you know they should um they should do what's right. But you know, sometimes they have this get rich squid. I borrowed this, 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 and this. I'm not paying back. Because that person's got plenty, or or they think that person's got plenty, and but it's the wrong spirit. Also, they should have the decency to tell you to why speak they, to you why, about it. Why they can't pay you back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They should have the decency to tell you about. Yeah. Thank you for those thoughts. Is that answer the question, Sister Dorothy? Yeah, it's very helpful, Sister Hope. That uh, sounded like he's got lots of scriptures on that. Mm. Because the Bible says also the wicked borrow, but they do not repay. And uh, say if somebody, for example, it's a difficult one, as the sister mm. uh, said, that we need to pray for the guidance. Because sometimes if somebody comes to you and you had planned for that money and they are in a desperate situation, right? They needed that money. Say somebody comes to you. And they borrow money, maybe their child is expelled from school or they need some, you know, emergency type of thing. But you had a plan for the money that you are lending them and your heart is touched with, with kindness and you want to give them trusting that they will pay back. But then, as you said, Darlene and Linda, one of you said, there are some people they borrow without any, uh, any, any, um, any uh, a plan to pay back is a difficult one <laughs> because there is a certain amount of money, as you said, you can afford to forget about it and lose, but there is a certain amount of money which you had saved for an important purpose for your life and then somebody takes that and they never even say why they can't pay and, you know, there are people who are used to receiving free help from the members. And I think to make a habit of it and to want to just make it a habit, it's, it, it's, um, it hurts those who have lent someone. And I think it's, I know a sister who is very well off. And even though she's well off, she lent someone a lot of money, a lot of money. And this person is still working. This person, the children have finished school. They are all working. Not a penny has been given back to this lady, this sister. And she hurts 
when she tells me, you can see that it really hurts her. She feels like she's been used. And that is the kind of thing I believe we should be ever so careful. Even if somebody else is rich, you they look rich, they it's their money and they were not intending to give it to you for free. Yeah, so uh, I think that's that one. We need to be careful how much we can lend and who we are lending and lend sometimes what you can afford to do without should they not pay back. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's good advice that was given. Um, only give what you can afford to lose. You know, mm -hmm. some people pack, uh, they, they have a habit of um, of a borrowing and um, they go everywhere. And, uh, and you know, that's how they get the money. Mm. Just give till it hurts. <laughs> um, Sister Sitoli, please. Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. My hand was not raised for the question of Sister Dorothy, but um, it just reminded me of my nephew. He tells me that when he has lent someone, he it's like he he doesn't think about it as a as a as a loan because of the experience that he has had. So. He, it's like he has written it off. If it gets retained, it gets retained. Um, he is he is one of the youth that have walked away from God. But I think the principle that he uses is is exactly what Sister Hope was talking about. That um, we leave it in the hands of God because if you are going to be cross with this person, guess what? He, now they are costing you the kingdom of heaven because now you are holding against them. So the thing is to, first of all, seek God's guidance when, when giving. And what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, you do. Even if he says, add more onto that huge sum of money that you paid, then you do it. Because that's obedience, isn't it? And in any case, he takes care of his own. Um, so in, in, all, in all circumstances, I think, we really need to enlist the Holy Spirit for all decisions that we have to make. Um, but what I raised my hand for is we, yesterday's question that Sister Dorot raised about when you have to correct someone. You see someone doing something wrong, uh, how do you correct, what to do in, the, in correcting them? But my my, I just want to throw a cat among the pigeons that uh, you are the one that is sitting on the other side of correction. Uh, what to deal, how to deal with it. Um, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Say someone comes to me and says, Mrs. Sitole, your skirt is a wee bit short. And to me, it doesn't look short, according to the health message. And I and, and I know that, well, for a, a lot of the times, the first thing that comes to mind is, who do you think you are? And um, you've already lost it when you, when you, you are thinking like that. So it's difficult, uh, but, but, but I'm giving a simple, a simple, um, example of a skirt but they, they are like like serious issues uh of so maybe someone is asking you why aren't you paying your tithes when you know that you are then uh, how do you deal with it and you don't want to involve yourself in um in in in, in a conversation about it so now how do you deal with a situation like that for example but many, many more examples because that clothing story, I've also uh, experienced it. And if you are the one who, who, who sees, oh, this doesn't look right, what I would do is just pray for the person because in the same way that I I, 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 would, I have the, well, who do you think you are, when it's directed at me, 
they'll probably have ways to tell you, to talk to, to reply to you about your, your admonishing in love. I don't know. Um, does anyone have anything to say about this particular one? I would appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. That's a question to everyone. If anybody's got any answers, uh, uh, let us know. Uh, the next one is Sister Hope. Uh, thank you. It's also another question. I wasn't going to answer that one, uh, but it's another question regarding judging. Judging. Um, we know, uh, as a sister I mentioned yesterday, that uh, when we, as a church, uh, we deal with things in a different way. Uh, but then when we are uh, uh, faced with certain circumstances, for instance, um, I, uh, I, I had an issue. I had an issue of uh, a sister of mine, our sister, beloved sister, who, who had traveled and... Uh, traveled from this country to Uganda on her way back uh, in the middle of her travel she she was declined to travel she of course she she has uh, she, uh, she she has disabilities um and then she was flown uh, 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 she was taken from uh, coming back to UK she was taken from Uganda and then to Nairobi to connect to come here and she, when she got to Nairobi, she could not. They declined her uh, from, the airline declined her from returning and she was taken back to Uganda. Now, uh, I'm asking, uh, perhaps because I was thinking that uh, by God's grace and mercy to show me what to do, uh, these are the people who have done uh, what they did and we have presented everything to them uh, right, rightly that she is, she has the right to travel with the doctor's letters and everything, but they still insist. Uh, they insisted to uh, uh, insisted us to pay the f another full amount of the of, of the of of her ticket to bring her back. Should my question was, should I take this person to court? because it has been unjust to her case. And uh, they, they did not have any, uh, they did not check whether she's sick or they have seen her disabilities. Uh, she needs a wheelchair, yes, for long distances. And she's always traveled with this airline. And I'm thinking they're getting away with so much. That is a question on the table, kindly, as God needs. That's another question, everyone. Anybody got any thoughts on that one? It's it's not good when them, uh, you, you know, big companies, uh, uh, you know, do things against you. Um, they could have wanted abroad. Mm. I mean, we had a situation where <laughs> where we are. We were travelling from um, Tanzania. Tanzania and we had to stop in Kenya to swap the plane. The plane was light, so we had a quarter of an hour to catch our plane. And um, they let Elder Search well and his wife through. Then they put the, um, the, bar red, the red rope and said, no, we've got to queue up and fill out a medical form. And the queue was about 100 people long. And it was that within transit? It was in transit. We had a quarter an hour to, collect to get our next plane. And um, they weren't that They had the search well. He, tried, he told them they need to get the plane, you know, that, you know, we was together. And they need to, he got, he, he was going to Scotland, we was coming back to England. And so his plane, he got about an hour or so, but we got a quarter of an hour. And I saw a gap in the ropes and I ran through. And they shouted, to stop that woman. Nobody stopped me. We ran and I looked behind and Harley was following me. And we, we ran to the next plane and got on. <laughs> what should we have done? I mean, should we have gone and queued up and missed our plane and then had to pay for another ticket? Because they would not have 
paid for another ticket. If they, so somebody said later, if, if they'd give me money, he might have let us through. It took years, years later, to think. Well, that's why they, why they did it. I know it never entered my head. But then we shouldn't, we shouldn't do bribes. You know, and um, but then should I have uh, uh, disobeyed uh, them? Linda ran and I thought, well, I can't say I couldn't, I couldn't um, stand there and thought, well, I can't say I'm not related, can I? So I thought, well, I'll take a chance with her. So I just followed her. And the best of it was we got on the plane, they were calling us from the plane and um, we told them what had happened, you know, that we, they wanted, to, you know, the plane was late and everything. Anyway, we got on the plane and then we, we were sat at the back and then these officials come on and we thought, oh dear. And so we got our blankets, covered our, fa covered our faces up, made out we were sleeping, but they didn't come down as far as us, so I presume they weren't looking for us. But that's the last time we went to Kenya, we got run out. <laughs> we had to run out. But, um, you know, it's sometimes you do get situations, but that's how we dealt with it. And uh, we felt like criminals, but um, there was, you know, there was no other way we were going get, to get home unless we paid for another ticket. <laughs> you don't feel a medical form out when you're on transit. You don't, no. It was just, um, it was just trying to... <laughs> I don't know. Then that, that was an unjust situation where but it kept shouting letters stop. to travel, you know, medical yeah. letters and that from the doctors, mm. and uh, they took no notice. Mm. I suddenly got the answers to Sister Hope's question. What was the question? Sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Um, was it the airline just stopped somebody from travelling? They were disabled. We should travel with them all those years, and and they stopped. And she got letters and everything to prove prove you know. that she was disabled and the reason, and um, they weren't there. That she was fit to travel, but they took no notice. Mm. Can I answer? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a very difficult uh, situation. And, um, you know, in our minds, you know, naturally would want to go to the court and get a, a fair hearing about the case. But as Christians, we are, we are rebuked not to go before these unjust judges. Our righteous judge is God. And, um, you know, our carnal nature will always say, let's go. I mean, we have to have justice about these things. But when we remember who we are, when the Spirit speaks to us to say, there's no righteousness in this, in this. the only righteous judge is God. And even if you take the case there, you'll be wasting your time because you might even lose. Let God vindic vindicate the case for you. Pray to God, Lord, this is what happened. And if you remember, even our own Savior, Christ, was being judged for things which he didn't do. He was being accused of things which he didn't do. Um... And he didn't even receive. He, they, they were people to even vindicate that, uh, yes, he's the son of God, but he didn't get that. Therefore, we should always remember that even these cases which we see, they are going to be even worse with this AI which is coming now. We are going to be standing in courts being accused of things which we didn't say. They might just take your voice and, and they will, you know, a play to say this is what this is what we understand you said and you didn't say that because of the AI intelligence we are going to see so many unjust things in these last days and we should remember that you know the only one who can vindicate us is Christ not the earthly judges that's that would be my 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 solution to that Yes, we're going to live in some interesting and perilous times. We, we've got all this uh, modern technology now yeah. that can uh, they can frame you, and you don't know anything about it. And 
you know, uh, they can just get your voice and, uh, and uh, you know. But, Say and said something, you haven't. But we're, all, we're told we just have to look to Jesus. We're told that we won't be brought into more than we can bear. You know, there will be a way out for us some way. So we just have to, just have to trust in God. That's where faith comes in. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Is that answer your question, Sister Hope? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, there was uh, somewhere that I'm looking um, where I don't know whether it's also related, but I remember it just came as the Holy Spirit was leading us, uh, leading that uh, there was a time, I think it's in one of the Gospels, where he says, make sure that you... Uh, you, you deal with your brother before you go to court. I can't remember where. Um, yes, but uh, yeah, we, we, we just have to pray about it and let God lead and guide us and show us what to do. Uh, not indeed to be led by the carnal mind, but uh, what the scripture of the Lord is telling us what to do. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for your uh, thoughts. Yeah, um, can, can I say something on that as well, please? Yes, please. Yeah, um, just to mention that, you know, you, you have companies who put um, certain policies and procedures in place to protect um, customers. And um, what you'll find is that um, not, not necessarily the company, but there are individuals who have certain positions and they can actually abuse that position. Now, my take on this is that the company's policies are in place to protect customers. And as even though we are Christians, if someone has been abused, I believe that there's a procedure in place, not only to compensate that individual, but also to prevent other people from being abused. And even in Israel, back in the time of Moses, God put procedures in place so that if people have a quarrel, they can go to the judge or they can go to the leader and then the problem will be solved. And so today, you know, I believe that God has directed um, and has... Um, they inspired um, companies or uh, uh, even governments to put things in place to protect citizens. So personally, I don't believe it's a sin to follow those procedures, you know, to prevent people from being abused. But then it's an individual choice. If the individual decides that they're going to bring it to God and allow God to deal with it, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as well as if you choose to follow the, those procedures, personally, I don't believe there's anything wrong with that. Now, when it talks about not going before the unjust judge, as Christians, I don't believe another Christ, a Christian should bring another Christian to court. You know? But then you have people who don't respect the Bible. They have no regards for God. And so the, 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 the procedure that you will follow with those individuals is to bring them to the judge who they fear and who they respect. And that's the only way you're going to have justice. So in, in, in saying that um, we are to have justice is not for us personally, but to also prevent other people from being abused. So human beings need to, we need to learn from our mistakes. And when you allow people to just carry on doing the wrong thing over and over again, you're not doing them any good. So, you know, we have to find a way so that people can learn from their mistake and make changes for the better. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, that's just my, um, my understanding of it. Yes, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and some people do abuse the position. Well, he did, didn't they? When he wouldn't let us through, there was no reason. 
There was no reason, that's any reason why we should queue up in a medical queue when we're in transit. And what for? You know, they do, do abuse the position, they think they can get money out of people. Yeah. So thank you, Elder Turner, for those thoughts. Um, I've, I've just found the scripture reading. It's in, actually in the in the uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter five, in the Beatitudes. Uh, uh, it's uh, verse twenty four. It, it talks about reconciliation, but verse twenty five says, "Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the, the, the at any time, the adversary deliver thee to the judge, to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the, and thou be cast into prison. Uh, yes. So, uh, as our elder was saying, even that time, even in the old times, there were judges there. Even Deborah was a judge. Uh, looking into the uh, the 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 needs of those people who would perhaps oppress the needy, uh, but as you say that uh, God puts uh, um, uh, um, those those uh, um, uh, uh, how should I put it? Uh, he always puts um, a, a a way to protect people who can who are who are oppressed or who oppress the needy so he he he, he puts um uh, a guideline on how to deal with with those people who oppress uh, it, it, it's so much like if we know the people who are abusing our children uh we cannot just be quiet and just be pray for uh there there are steps on how we can deal with those issues. And it, and it is abuse uh, to a certain extent, because if you allowed someone to travel from this country and go back home and then uh, in returning you, you stop, there is something that is not right. It is not something that is right. It is, is right. That's uh, abusing their power. Uh, but let continue to pray for it and let the Holy Spirit lead and guide. Thank you for your comments. Amen. Yes, thank you, Sister Hope. Um, Sister Metron, thank you. Hi, morning, um, everyone. I just want to uh, un also comment on Sister Dorothy's uh, comments. I hope I haven't forgotten what uh, she was saying because of the other comments that are coming in, which are quite good. Um, I think it's about borrowing somebody, yeah, from Sister Dorothy, if I remember. I was also looking at it in another way to say, you know, when somebody comes to borrow us money or to borrow you some money, wouldn't it be also a good thing to protect that person from sinning when they will fail to pay back the money uh, that we uh, sort of like... Um, discuss that with the person before I give them the money they are asking. If the money is too too large, and then we can probably begin by uh, looking at a small amount to say, ah, no, you know what? Because I will be knowing that this big money will be difficult for this person to bring it back to me. Uh, we can probably talk about a small money to say, oh, no, how about if we begin from maybe just a hundred a hundred pounds if they wanted the one thousand pounds or whatever uh, how about if we begin by this and uh, see how it goes um and then uh, you, you just test the person to see if they will be able to kind of like uh you no know, retain retain the money and in that way we are preventing our brothers our sisters from 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 sinning and from from even hating us as well when they are no longer able to to pay the money back because it will hurt yourself continually and the person will not even realize how much that it's um it's it's hating you because we have people 
that we still hear even in most of the prayer prayer groups wherever we are that praying that I borrowed this person money, a lot of money, and they were promising to bring it back. They are working, they are stable, but still they can't uh, pay it back. Um, we it's 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 just a very uh, challenging situation where you would be in a position to want to help somebody, but if they are not able, let's prevent them from also sinning by not by not tending according to their promises of paying you back that money. I would rather give them a very small amount, which I know if they are not able to give it back, I will not hold account on them, and I will not. It will not hate me than just giving that big, large uh, amount in trusting that they are working, they are stably, financially stable, uh, they can be able to give me back. Yet, mm -mm, that's not reality. That's not in real. The real situation is somebody is gainfully employed, but they, are giving, but they can't manage to give back when they have borrowed somebody, even if they are you know, financially stable or whatever. But for some reason, the enemy is just there to cause a division on people. So maybe let's help our brothers and our sisters also to not to, for them not to sin by just giving for the sake of giving them, but let's just weigh the situation. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, the lower to you, uh, wanting money and that, to prop up a habit like a substance of their own drugs and that, they'll mm. do anything. That happened to us, we didn't know till later, that was the reason. Yeah, they said they wanted books for the university and the person was on drugs. You know, you, they did the <laughs> scheming, not good. Mm. Sister Sharon, I think you're the next one. Thank you for those thoughts, Sister Metron. Yeah, good morning, everyone. The Bible says there is wisdom in a multitude of counsels. So thank you so much for bringing up this discussion and Elder for responding, because I think that's where it triggers. Israel got themselves into a lot of trouble and they found themselves in captivity because of the way that they treated people who are marginalized, you know, the widows, the poor, the people with disability. So as he right, um, Elder rightfully said, that is something that you should pursue. However, you should not pursue it through the a lawyer. What you should do is to find an advocate. And there are um, advocates that deal with people with disabilities that um, if you can find the right person that deals with disability issues, you may find that you may not even have to um, actually exp um, spend any money because the advocacy services will take up your charge and see that there is injustice being perpetrated. So there, there are things in place. And as Elder rightfully said, there were always systems in Israel that protected the marginalized. It was for the priests. There were often, as they said, the judges, the kings, but we know that oftentimes that um, our leaders are not godly people, but they can be moved by our God. So we just need to um, pray about it, find the system that will do it, where we don't have to actually um, find money out of our own pockets to resolve the issue. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Uh, there are bodies that can... Uh, help you in situations that uh, where it doesn't have to end up in court, but it, they dealt with. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Uh, Brother JB. I uh, just want to comment on the, I think there was a comment to do with money and borrowing somebody money. I think for me, the principle is um, I don't lend out 
uh, what's the amount that I'm not prepared to lose. Because when we lend out, there's always a risk of the person not paying it back. So if they don't pay it back, you can't hold it against them. Because if you hold it against them, it means I've sinned. The scripture says forgive. So we have to forgive them because you can't take them to court or do anything um do anything related to that. So the in the first place, if one feels that the amount is too much to even lend them, it's better not to lend them in the first place. But we there's an option to give if we choose to give them because the blessing is on those who give than on those who receive. So, but if the person chooses not to pay back, we have to go back to the scripture. And the scripture says forgive and let it go. But we can't keep on talking about it that I lent somebody some money, they never paid it back. How does God look at us when we start doing that? So we should be able to be in a position uh to follow the scripture and the scripture just says forgive and let it go yes thank you for those thoughts as well that's um that's biblical that we have to um let go um you know leave it with the lord yeah because he can make you ill mm. he tell me how you're a lot of money and you keep festering over it you know mm. something you just got to let go Leave it with the Lord. Mm. You find some people in such dire straits that you think you've got to help them. And, um, you know, it's... Um, what do you do? It's a good advice, though, to only lend what you can afford to lose. Mm. Sister Dorothy, please. Yes, sir. Thank you for those answers regarding this question. Sorry to hold the study back. And uh, you see, I... What Brother JB was saying there, I think that should be probably the conclusion of the whole matter because sometimes it's your actually very close friend, someone you respect in church, they may come with a need and you feel, oh, this brother, he cannot not, not pay me back or sister. And then you trust and you find that deep in their hearts, they never really had an intention to pay or even show up a sign of paying a little amount. And that's where I think we need to pray for wisdom and God to guide us. And at the same time, you don't want to withhold help from your brother, you see, but you don't want to sin and find that they hurt you so much, you're finding it difficult to forgive them if they didn't pay you back. A, fr a, a Christian borrowed me a thousand pounds. And to me, a thousand pounds is a lot of money. And, um, and I couldn't anyway lend that kind of money without my husband knowing. And I said, uh, I said to her, I, I I'll give you 300 pounds because I can part with 300 pounds without having to explain to my husband what I've done with the money. And uh, you know what? She, she, she turned it down. She refused to take the, the offer. So what do you do when somebody acts like that? It's like they already had an expectation and they feel that they are within, it's their right to, for you to honor their their request and that can be very hurtful at the same time because I'm thinking I offered you what I can afford what I'm comfortable offering you and because it is less than what you asked you you take offense and you walk away and you don't talk to me <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes it's hard thank you yes thank you uh, for those thoughts as well it's a it's a it's a difficult one this one and because uh, we travel quite some places we often get emails or texts can you lend me this we don't even know the person but they just presume that we've got money to lend and um you know we, you know we just um what can you do you don't know they want to they want money to put to start a business you don't you just don't know the person so you know you can't you can't go down that road. You don't know what you're supporting. 
could be a lucrative business. Yeah, you don't know what it, you don't know what a kind of business it is. You know, they're not. They just say, "Can you?" Help? You know, we get, we get. It's usually on WhatsApp. You get a. Um, they they want into you to help them. And um, you know you can't do it because you don't know anything about them. You don't know what you're propping up. How does anybody deal with that situation? Mm, yeah, it's a difficult one. Sister Dorcas, thank you. Thank you. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this thing is a very difficult thing. We can see sin as well if we refuse them to give them when we can afford to give them. Because when God blesses us, he also wants us to, to bless others. But when someone is borrowing, there is something which forces him to borrow. We are not supposed to borrow, but sometimes you have to borrow because you, they, you have no option, you have to borrow. So when someone is borrowing, he needs a certain number of uh, a certain amount of money which he wants to 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 which he wants to use. So if you say that oh I can give you two hundred only when the deadline of uh, what he wants to use it for is uh, today or tomorrow, and uh, there is a certain amount of money. I myself I feel that I am sinning if I refuse to give that person money. And when I know that I've got money somewhere which I can give that person to solve that problem which they have, because God says that if we we have something, I want to say when Christ was on earth. When that rich young ruler went to him, asking him how he can enter the the kingdom of God, he, Christ told him to go and sell whatever he have and he share with the poor. But he, he didn't want it. He went away because he, he didn't want to lose what he had to share with others. The same applies with us. This person is really desperate. He needs help. And we have that money. But because we are thinking that he's not going to, to give it back to us, so it's better for us not to give him. We are also sinning. There is even that story where that man who borrowed someone Money and he didn't give him his money. He 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 wanted his money and he had to to sue that person because of that money, which was not good. But the other one, that chief, he had forgiven him. He let him go with all what he he had taken. So the same applies with us today. God has given us what he has given us. And there is someone who is in need. And we are saying, we are starting to judge, to say, oh, you won't be able to, to, to give it back to me. So I mustn't give it back to, to him. What are we doing? We are sinning now because God gave us to also share with others. So when someone... If God wants to, to borrow, he is not just borrowing just because of borrowing, but there is a need, a desperate need, which is making him borrow. And sometimes he borrow with that heart that he will pay it back. And situations, they change any time, and something will just happen, and you won't be able to, to pay back that money the time when you have promised. But your heart, you want to pay back the money. Just put yourself in that person's shoes and feel how that person will feel if that person will be persecuted because they didn't pay that money or anything can happen because they didn't have that money. 
it can happen to you as well too tomorrow. So it's not good to judge people that, oh, if I give him so much, he, mo he won't be able to pay it back. Let's give. When we give, God will bless us more and he will give us. We are not, we don't have the strength to have all these riches. It's only God who blesses us. So let us not judge people. Let us give willingly. And let's say, if he brings it back, that's fine. If he doesn't bring it back, that's fine. It's only God who can give us all what we have. That's what I thought. Thank you for those thoughts, sir. Sister Dorcas. It's getting interesting, this, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> and time's finished. Um, yeah, we've been in the park tomorrow. <laughs> um, I think the person who you are, Emma, you know, who, 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 who has borrowed off you, I think they should have the decency to discuss it with you, not just be silent. You know, that's... Um, um, that is the, you know that's a way forward to discuss it why they can't um, return the money that you know they promised to do um, sometimes they need counseling sometimes they don't know how to um, they don't know how to budget, budget. themselves yeah they don't yeah. know how to budget themselves and just get themselves in one mess after another you know they may need help that way you know they just 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 go out and buy 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 things they yeah, don't need HP, like, some yeah. people want things all at once we know a couple they got married and the um, the, the, they was buying the house and they, were, and they was buying the furniture and there was everything all was at HP and of course they ended up losing the house and everything mm -hmm. you know because it just wasn't paying the bills you know you've got to be wise um, in, in, you get, uh, don't you get yourself in a hole that you can't um, get out of no. you know some people dig, dig themselves a hole and they fall in it mm. I thought I saw Sister V's hand up We can't hear what you're saying. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, can you hear me? You're very faint. I mean, you're not very loud at all. Okay, can you hear me now? A bit better. Good morning. Thank you very much. What an interesting... <laughs> an interesting. interesting. We did come in a little bit later, but uh, I think we all have to be uh, a little bit acquainted with the the way to handle finances as the bible tells us there's a lot a lot that we all have to learn of how to handle finances and possessions uh in scripture however um i i it, it's a difficult one um but i wanted to look at it also from the perspective of the lender and i think some the borrower rather and i think somebody mentioned it also if indeed we are christian and we want to borrow something from somebody it makes sense, it's reasonable to be able to explain to that someone what the situation is. Because one cannot just come and say, I have a problem and I need this and this, I need some money or I need to borrow this something from you without giving a, re a decent reason as to why. Be honest, let's try to be, because by the time you mastered up courage to come to that person and ask them for money, for example, we all have to have the decency then to explain to them why is it that we're borrowing money. Honestly, if we even go to banks to borrow money or money lenders, we shouldn't, I know, but sometimes we're pressed to. They sit you through a serious interview as to what money you need and what do you need. For. And sometimes it's your own money you're trying to take out the account, you know, and they're asking, what is it for? Can you imagine? So <laughs> we have to be also reasonable. But from the side of the lender, I was thinking to myself, indeed, I think many people have mentioned it, lend only what you think you can uh, afford to lose and just let it go because it will chew you up. It's a difficult one and it's painful when someone suggests that they will pay you back or give you back at something and they don't. However, in those situations, like someone has just posed, we have a lot of things of how to deal with that situation to calm our souls, but also to pray for that person. Um, but also as the borrower, we, we do have a duty to help others. However, we still have to use wisdom because you cannot just give anything, anyhow, and especially right now, there's a lot of fraudulent activities going on, funny calls that people are calling from different destinations 
saying this and saying that, we still have to use a little bit of wisdom. We cannot judge somebody's motive, but at the same time, wisdom is needed. Um, otherwise, honestly speaking, we will all be borrowing left, right, and center, and we'll all be broke if we're not already with this cost of living. Because we cannot save everybody. And I say that with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying we don't reach out to people. I'm saying that we also have to be reasonable and consider, okay, Lord, open my eyes and see. I don't, cannot see the motive of this person. But if really they are trying to, you know, deceive me, make it clear to me. And in the end, if they do deceive and the Lord decides to close that matter and not show you, then we just have to let it go. But what we cannot do is always respond to people's expectations most of the time that we don't even know. So if we cannot have an idea of what expectation, we're going to be in trouble. We cannot respond to everybody's expectation of us. And also as borrowers, we cannot come and ask for help and have such huge expectations of somebody. We don't Yes, thank you for those thoughts. Um, yes, there's a lot there. Um, um, I think we'll probably be taking this up again tomorrow. I think my mic came off at that time, so I don't it know. Did. If yeah, I wonder if it, it, it seemed to have broke. Had you finished? Had you finished, Sister V? Because it seemed to stop halfway it through did, your sentence. Yeah. Mm. Is she having a problem with muting? Must be having a problem with muting now, anyway. Anyway, Tom's finished and I'm sure we've all oh, she's been... unmuted. Um, had you finished? <laughs> I think, uh, sorry, a call did come through. I was just finishing up with saying yes. that as uh, um, lenders and borrowers also, borrowers rather, and lenders, we cannot have a high expectations of somebody. You're coming to someone for help. The help comes from the Lord. But we cannot borrow. I'm trying to meet somebody's expectation of us and find ourselves also in problems. So some um, reasonable um, consideration is needed and we cannot help everybody. There's a lot of fraud going around. I don't know to what point you stop hearing me. Um, and there's a lot of def you know deception going around. We have to ask God, open my eyes to see the real motive of this person. If the Lord chooses to close our eyes, okay, and we decide to give it, give it and let it go knowing that it might not come back. I know it's a negative way to think, but unfortunately, that's what usually happens in a lot of cases. And as Christians, the borrowers also, we have to be able to give an explanation to why we are borrowing that money. Lord have mercy, you go to the bank to even borrow your own, to take out your own money, and they ask you what you need it for, in the cheek. So now if we go to ask somebody, can we not explain to somebody if we have the decency and the courage to come and ask them for help for money can we not also explain to them what it's for and be open if we cannot then that's us with it's us with the lord but we also have to exercise some wisdom and follow some financial counsel we've been given in the scripture otherwise we'll be borrowing left right and center if we have it that is but we cannot do that perhaps i'm wrong but these were my thoughts we cannot always meet somebody's expectations and as a borrower we need to also lower our expectations of somebody else and give our expectation to the lord yes thank you for those thoughts it's Very true good. about the bank yeah i went to get some money out for myself and they asked well are oh, you being blackmailed you know <laughs> um <laughs> it's uh things have changed to what it used to be you know especially in the financial world definitely and we must pray for wisdom as to who to lend to and who not to lend to. If they don't give you an explanation why they want the money, it's, 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 um, you've got to pray about this. As know, I said, we get, it's, not, it's not wise to lend somebody money if you don't know why they want it. And as if we get some texts and some of them are really rude and just demanding, I want to borrow this. You know, borrow will you, no, will, will you give me this? And, and they don't get any explanation. You know, they're just absolutely rude, some of them. Um, you know, they come and ask for your number, or somebody give them the number, and uh, you know, we just get we get um, snowed under with some kind of text wanting this, that, and the other, and you can't do it. Then you get a phone call, you know, about this wanting bank details over the phone, and how I dealt with that one, I says, "Can you wait a minute? I'm just going to get my sister's phone, and I'm going to record this what you're saying to me." And they they put the phone down. <laughs> so I dealt with that one. <laughs> 
You know, there's fraud everywhere. Yeah, there is. Anyway, we've gone over a bit of time, but it's been a real good discussion. Um, we haven't done any paragraphs, so it will be part 26 tomorrow. Um, so uh, at um, 12 o'clock, no, yeah, 12 o'clock at the midday prayer. Then at 6.30 sound service, we had an hour sound service last night. And then at 7 o'clock, another tiny message from Brother Don Ward. Another hot potato. Yes, yeah, so we'll have a pan full at the end of the week. <laughs> this is his, his, old, his, um, uh, his, his last one will be tomorrow night. So have a nice day, everyone, and see you all later, by God's grace. Hello, excuse me, Hello? good morning. Yes. Can I pray? Yes, please, yes. I was going to ask me to pray, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Father in heaven, as we all discussed this morning about borrowing and lending, we know that everything come, everything that is good come from the Lord. We look to you, dear Lord Jesus, for wisdom and understanding. Let us not be, um, let us not be uh, one that is in the world and, and give everything to the world, but let us do it amongst ourselves. Let us not be um, one that, if our brother or our sister needs needs our help, dear Lord, we turn them away. But let us discuss, because you said we must all reason together. So, Father God, help us, Lord Jesus, to know the right thing to do. Help us, Lord, to know that we can come to you and you will direct our path. So I thank you, dear Lord Jesus, this morning for this discussion. This I pray in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer. As I just said to them, should we ask to pray? And um, thank you for volunteering. And so have a nice day, everyone. We've done the announcements. We've done everything. And uh, let's go our way and uh, do God's will. And if we lend, don't gossip to everybody. I've lent them this, I've lent them that. Mm. You know, that's, that's um, uh, <laughs> you don't sort of make it a, um, yeah. <laughs>